We're here tonight on the first night of the season of the reopening of Cadeau Bornholm. I'm super excited to be here. It's my first time and this is one of Andrew's favorite restaurants in the world. We're gonna go talk with head chef Nikolai. He's gonna tell us all about the renovation they just did here. They have a brand new open kitchen overlooking the restaurant, overlooking the beautiful water. Let's go eat. You might have some uh, sandy toes when you're here. My name is Nikolai Norgard and I'm the head chef and co-founder of the uh, restaurant Kedo. Les Vignes de Montgru, a Blanc de Blanc. This is one that we know and love, but it's gonna have uh, some really nice sort of like green and yellow fruit aromas, nice acidity on the finish, a little bit toasty. So I'm from Svenige in the east part. Rasmus is he's from the countryside just outside of Svenige and uh, Manus is from Nexer. But we all worked in Svenige at uh, this family style restaurant called Pakmusl. Um, me and Razi we ran the place uh, and Manus was he was back then he was hired as a like a like a cleaning lady as he he likes to say and uh, and then he started in the kitchen and then eventually he went to the you know, front of house, and we kind of like brought him along. Um, so we've been working together actually, the three of us since, yeah, 2000. Um, back in 2007, me and Rasmus decided to open a, a restaurant. Actually, it was 2006. Um, and we had a friend who owned this building for two years. He ran a restaurant and we helped him uh, for a summer. We fell in love with the place. And then in the like late 2006, he decided to sell and we decided to buy. So that's basically how we, we got this crazy, wonderful place um, by the sea. We call it, uh, in maybe in lack of better words, uh, like Bonhomme Chawa kitchen. Soon after Noma opened, we decided to to follow the footsteps of like or follow the dogmas, uh, the, the restrictions as it also is. We decided to to scale it even further down. So taking it from like the whole you know the, the whole Nordic region, we boiled it down to uh, to as much of Bonhomme. I mean, to cook with as much produce from Bonhomme as possible. Uh, and then otherwise look to the like the south of Sweden and the rest of Denmark and a little bit Norway also. Unripe uh, blackcurrants and blackcurrant wood, uh, dried sauerkraut, uh, clam, and uh, like this super acidic uh, juice from fermented pea and uh, white currant it's it's a uh, i mean to me it's the like the the taste of kiddo i would say the taste of of of, of my kitchen obviously we use a lot of the wild nature um, and uh, we also grow a lot in the gardens this one was our original garden okay. and then we expanded the first big one that you walked past and then we just planted another third one in the back. This looks like a giant asparagus. But that's thing. how it is. So and then, crazy. Have you, have you guys ever picked fresh asparagus and no. had it? But like this is how I yeah. should like see this? Dripping. It's crazy how like sweet and juicy it is. Crazy. Yeah. The main idea is also to keep it um, sustainable. I mean, every every day the chefs start in the garden. We pick our own mise en place, so so we don't have to throw away a lot. And also, 
it's easier for the chef that's actually cooking the dish to know exactly what what part of the plant, how the, how it should look, how you know how ripe it should be, uh, or how unripe it should be. Um, so so we can pick the perfect sizes. So we we save a lot of energy in in you know like going through stuff and also throwing stuff away because it's, it's you know it's too big or too small or. So strawberries from the, the garden. Did you eat any strawberries while you were in the garden? Oh yeah. Yeah, you had a few. So we have ripe, and then we also have green. The green ones have just been compressed in a little bit of a, a kombu oil, and then we have a, this paste of noblest pine, as well as the young cones pickled, and then some Scots pine that's been pickled. You have this really aromatic broth that's made on angelica, and also some cannon. I mean, the, what is typical about Bonham is the is the climate here. It's uh, it's very different from from the rest of the Nordic region. It has this weird kind of like it's like this island climate, uh, right in between zones. So you know when you have a growth zone of some ingredients that is like the s most southern southern part, you know it goes. It's Bonham and also north. And also we have these cold springs because. You know, the, the, the Baltic Sea is cold, the island is a rock island, so it's kept cold. Uh, so it takes some time to, to heat it, but once it's heated, the sea and the rock, it keeps like the, the heat for much longer. So we have these super nice, like uh, long summers. Uh, the fall can be much warmer than the rest of, uh, of Denmark. So we can grow stuff that is, you know, that gets better because of the, the late sun, like also like figs and mulberries and stuff like that, which is the typical part of uh, of the typical produce from Bonham. Also, the 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 land here is is super lush, uh, so we have a lot of everything. Um, like, pick one thing is, is Ramson. Uh, it's basically everywhere, and there's like tons of it. And that is just an example of of produce that is like that really feels the lush uh, environment. One of my favorite signature dishes, uh, of, you know, one that I can't take off. Probably gonna do it for 30 years more. Uh, it's uh, it's called peltest. It's a Danish word for uh, basically a porridge pancake. Uh, it's made with day-old porridge uh, that's been yeasted, uh, added a added an egg yolk, uh, stirred and then like raised and fried. Uh, we add a bit of koji to it as well, and we serve it with um, this year with a bit of mussels and uh, ruba root, uh, cheese, and flowers. This is craft. So it's 100% Sauvignon Blanc. It's named after the parcel. Basically, there's a really big hill, and this is the middle section. It has a lot of like vegetal kind of aromas, a bit of like asparagus there, this like salty kind of feeling. It's a signature dish of ours. It's a scallop with a dried scallop, a potato from scallop roll, and we do this kind of. It's a bit like licorice, and we make it like like raw licorice. It looks like raw licorice. It, it tastes a lot like raw licorice, just better, uh, with a seafoody note to it. Uh, we grate that on top of uh, of scallops, let it melt, and uh, serve it with with a horseradish cream. And uh, this year we're gonna try with a bit of uh, pickled pumpkin leather. Uh, just to give it a bit of chewiness. This is our tostada, as we call it. We've made the cracker on buckwheat, and then you're gonna find a savory paste that's made with blue mussels and a bit of rhubarb root oil. On top, there's shallots cooked in the fireplace, there's chewy carrots, and there's also some pickled nasturtium stems. On top, you have a little bit of uh, mustard flowers. The, ca the cabbage surprise. Ooh. So we have a, a piece of white cabbage that's been blanched and then it's just been fried, so a little bit of caramelization. You're gonna find some more cabbage inside that's been fried for a really, really long time, so the sugars are starting to break down there. A little bit of uh, pickled spruce shoots and then also some hazelnut. On top there's a paste 
that's made on Lovage and Ramson and Parsley. But the most exciting thing, if you want to, do you want to lift it up? We've done something every year, but this is the biggest one we've done. Uh, and the one we've been waiting, waiting for the most because the kitchen was very old. When we took over, we changed a few, you know, machines, uh, but we didn't change like the, you know, the, the tiles or the flooring or, and it was super old. And we were basically dying in there. And uh, finally now we could finish it. Um, after all the Corona shit and bankruptcy. <laughs> and the idea is to, uh, to obviously make it more open. The, the whole atmosphere, guests coming in the kitchen, you know, without feeling awkward. It's, we just like that very much. Also, this is a chance to cook a bit, with, a bit more with fire, as we do in Copenhagen. Um, smoke more. This is the, say the highlight of the, of Keto so far. Thank you. 